Well, hi everyone. Welcome back to another episode, uh, episode number 51 of Speed Tips by Bob and Chad. Um, glad to see all you. Glad to be up here in front of all you guys again. Um, we had a great weekend last weekend. We had our uh, uh, BHE four link school at the shop there. And of course, Chad was there and Ben Baker was there and Riley Hatfield. And then, of course, my son Bobby Harris was part of the group. Excellent group. Uh, had a lot of fun. Everything went really well. And tremendous amount of information. I was very, uh, very pleased with the school. What was your opinion, Chad? Yeah, I think it went well. Had a lot of good questions, and Riley brought a Riley brought a new aspect uh, of uh, crew chief slash former driver approach. So it was it was definitely a good time, and I think everybody should have learned something. I think even I learned a couple things. Yeah, well, I did too. Like I was when we were talking before we went on the air. Part of the time on Friday, I'm sitting there listening to Riley because I'm like, well, I never thought of it that way. Well, I never thought about that that way. And, you know, I've been doing this for 40 years, and I'm thinking, well, that's a good idea. I'm glad he brought that up. And I'm thinking, hmm. So I'd get caught up almost in the motion of learning and forgot, wait a minute here, i got to stay on task. <laughs> yeah. So, but that was fun. It was a great time. And, and uh, looking forward to our New York school. Um, uh, Kirk Spaulding is going to be one of the guest speakers out there, along with uh, – Joel Smith and, and uh, a representative from uh, Hoosier Tire is going to be there. Uh, so we're going to have a, a, an excellent cast. And, of course, Chad Weirs is going to be there. Ben Baker is going to be out there again. Uh, kind of my two two sidekicks to do these schools with me all the time. And we're, we're, we, I enjoy what those guys bring to the table all the time and, and always uh, help me out. So it's pretty cool. So looking forward to the New York school, first part of March, or first weekend in March, actually. Um, so what do you got going on, Chad? Oh, we're uh, got done with last weekend. Now we're worrying about working on this weekend. So we now we're busy. Uh, we're going to do a, a boat sports and travel show this weekend for the non-Weirs Machine products. So we got our, our new company that we're, we're part of, which is Trace My Space, which is toolbox foam inserts for to organize your toolbox. Uh, so we're going to debut that at that show. And then, of course, we make the turkey news. Turkey season's coming up. So this is a cool little uh, noose that my buddy Steve Bachman that works here came up with. But you put that around the legs and throw the bird over your shoulder or the coyote over your shoulder and carry it out. And then, of course, we got the scorekeepers. So we got the, the little scoresets and the big scoresets. So we're we're busy getting ready for that show this weekend. We got two of them outdoor RV boats shows the next two weekends. So kind of a change of pace for me going from racing products to our Weirs the Outdoor stuff and, and the organizing thing. And, of course, we'll have the Wyatt bikes there, too. So it's cool to be a part of uh, them other brands along with, you know, kind of the racing industry, but, you know, branching off into different aspects uh, sure. of outdoor world and, and then of course we hopefully if you're on our mailing list or bought anything you got your 2022 product catalog in the mail uh must have been much last bigger weekend. catalog than in years past bigger yeah a lot yeah. more paper. well according to the invoice from the print company it was way bigger <laughs> oh i see funny how that works yeah yeah. Uh -huh. yeah yeah we added some pages there but no it's uh Nicole did a really good job of that, and we're really proud of that new catalog. And if you uh, if you haven't got one, give us a call or an email or something, and we'll get one in the mail right away to you. Awesome. So where are these? Where's these boat shows at? This week is here in Lacrosse, uh, okay. and then next week is up uh, by Duluth there, and then I think we're we got one more coming up in Eau Claire in a few weeks. So. Just little regional shows that uh, we did one a couple years ago with just the scorekeepers and went pretty good. So we figured we'd give her another go at her. Cool. Well, yeah. I think that sounds exciting. I, I wish yeah. those shows were closer. I would come. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of, um, I'm looking forward to when they have those shows here in Iowa like they have done in the past and getting all, you know, like, Kind of some nights I get bored and, you know, the, the TV, you can only watch the, the same reruns so many times. So I've been 
doing all my work with my uh, lures and kind of going through the lures and I'm counting all the ones that I didn't use last year and I'm thinking to myself, hmm, no wonder my bag is so freaking heavy because I got all these lures. They look cool, but heck, I never use them. So yeah. I've been taking inventory and I, then after I took inventory, I thought, oh my God, how much money do I really have wrapped up in this? And it's like, oh, I don't even want to know. The but, outdoors is as bad as racing. It's an addiction. Oh man, it's, ter it's terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Well, our first question. Now, Peter, hey guys, I'm running a Wasota B mod. Front chain limiter is a new rule change for 2022. How does this help the car on race uh, on the track? Thanks. Well, Peter, I, in, in my opinion, that chain rule on the left front is one of the best tuning tools that we can possibly do. It uh, uh, you can take a car now. Now keep in mind, you know, like I told you know, I told the guys last week at school, where I actually set my chain is an inch and a half a drop. And I very seldom go a quarter of an inch or the most I ever really move it is a half an inch. You know, you can choke that chain up a little bit and get more drive out of the car coming off the corner. Keep in mind, though, it's just like everything. Once we transfer more drive to the left rear, then we've got to remember we took a little drive away from the right rear. So sometimes the car can get a little bit loose or a little bit freer getting in. So knowing that, you know, you might have to make a panard bar change to tighten it up a little bit, but it's definitely good for traction. And, and having that, it's so easy to make an adjustment. And believe it or not, I mean, you know, your driver will definitely notice a, a, a big difference in a half an inch. Um, you know, Jake McBurney, who runs our stuff, uh, they change theirs a quarter of an inch at a time. And uh, seems to work well. Ryan, I can't remember what you said the previous post, Bob. What effect does mounting the pull bar to the left of the chassis of center line of the pinion on the chassis side? Well, anytime you move a pull bar to the left, you're going to gain traction on the left rear tire. Uh, anytime we move, whichever tire we move the pull bar towards, that's where it's going to influence the traction and, and give you more traction. However, once again, if we go and try to influence more of the left rear, we took something away from the right rear, so we took a little bit of side bite away from the car. Kind of the same thing as the chain. If you do move it to the left, uh, which is definitely traction, it will traction it up. Um, works best on a, more of an open type car. Uh, crate motor, you know, you move it to the left and then you can kind of end up getting a throttle push in the middle of the corner. It makes the car a little tight in the middle of the corner. But it definitely will tighten the car up, uh, uh, moving it to the left. Moving it to the right will free the car up a little bit more, gives you a little bit more side bite. A lot of times I've moved it an inch to the right and felt I gained speed. But I, where I picked up speed was I picked up speed in the middle of the corner, which... In my opinion, whoever's the fastest in the middle of the corner is the one that's going to win the race. And that's been a, a, a good thing for us. But that's with the crate motor. So, you know, keep that all in mind. Um, Matthew, a 9.5 versus an 11-inch spring on the front on a USRA beam mod or a 3-link. Pros and cons. Well, the 11 inch spring, you know, it's, it's just like everything when the car tries to do its motion and lift up. Now, if you're using the chain, um, I don't think there's a bit of difference between the two springs. Uh, if you're not using a chain, the 11 inch spring just stays in contact a little bit longer. But as far as how they actually make the car work, uh, I can't see a tremendous amount of difference nowadays that we're using chains or we're using short shaft shocks or, and that kind of stuff, I can't say there's a big difference one way or the other. Uh, Darren wants to know, do you sell just a little black bracket that mounts in front of the lower for the chain limiter? Yeah, we sell that. Just to, uh, give Austin a call at the shop tomorrow and tell him that you want just that bracket. We'll sell that bracket individually. That's not a problem. 
And Chad, you've got a bracket that you sell individually too. We just use our uh, 257 Clevis off the chains. It's just got a half inch bolt. Yep, it's a little bit taller than yours, but does the same thing. Yep. Uh, Jeff, IMCA Sport Mod doesn't roll in the right rear very well. What should I change? Um, well, this kind of goes into a little bit of a situation where, once again, you know, where's the spring table on the car? And, you know, if the right rear is mounted higher than the left rear, part of the problem is is, is the center of gravity. It's, it's trying to roll up before it can roll over, and that just causes a problem. I mean, it, uh, uh, but, you know, spring location, uh, move your right rear spring inboard a little bit will help it roll. And you know, maybe your spring's mounted too far out, closer to the housing. And what happens, a lot of people will mount that spring out there further than they use a softer spring. But the problem with that is it actually makes the car kind of lazy. Uh, our spring is 12 inches from the center of the, or from the hub to, to the center of the spring. So um, I felt that works the best as far as uh, getting the car to roll on the right side. You can put more panard bar in it. Uh, however, you know, I, I'd rather see uh, maybe move some other stuff. The panard bar can be kind of a crutch. Chad, do you prefer the OD grab cup or the drop cup? I would I would run an OD grab cup all the time if you can, whether it's a drop or a top bearing cup. the 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 OD cups keep the the springs lined up way better than the the ID cups. So all five inch springs are, are nominal five inch OD, so they're going to keep the spring lined up. Then you can run the Torrington bearing on the inside and and really uh, help the the life of that spring and and make it act better. And uh, as long as your screw jacks are built right, the OD cups are the way to go. Now, you have a rear OD cup that's a little longer now, right? Yep. We just, for like sport mod stuff, we made a taller uh, bolt-in OD cup. We had our short one, but some of the cars climbed so much that they were just coming out a little bit. So we made a little bit taller one uh, for, well, you can run that in either side. It don't matter. So you really need to watch in the rear, you know, as you're climbing down the straightaway and the cars are lifting, if you're pulling off that spring left rear or right rear, to make sure that everything stays uh, in the cup. So, and that's more critical with the OD grab short lip stuff than, than the traditional ID grab stuff. So we did make a little bit taller uh, 404 cup. Yep. 404 that's TC. A, that's a big difference running that type of cup. I, I really like what that does. Freeze it. You put that Torrington bearing in there, um, you know, and just Sandra's next. We got a question down the road here. Are you running Torring Torrington bearing in all four corners? Yeah, by by far. Uh, just run them on the top. We don't run them on the bottom. We just run them on the top. Uh, as long as as long as you have OD grab cups and it stays in tension. If you if you have a a corner where the spring comes loose, then that bearing can get misaligned. So as long as you're in tension and you have an OD cup. Uh, you can run Torrington on every corner. Hmm. Uh, well, we're missing a question, and I don't actually know how to go back up. Which can one? Can you see that question that says, Todd, the bottom part of it says, good, good starting point to leave travel, body roll, all both sides. Uh, when mounting outboard front shocks on an IMCA stock car, how much of the shaft is a good starting point to leave for travel body roll on both sides? Um, as a rule of thumb, I always recommend, you know, on my right sides, um, your, your right front, you're going to want to have a five inches of shaft showing on it uh, with a seven inch shock because you're going to be always in compression mode. You're not going to be in rebound mode. My right rear, I usually put that so that it's about halfway, you know, maybe four inches uh, of shaft showing rather than three. Now, my left side, that's a little bit different deal. Uh, like the left front, I usually only have about two inches of shaft showing so that I get plenty of movement. Uh, and the same with the left rear. You know, my left rear, 
at right height it only has two inches of shaft showing because I want to make sure that the, the shock has plenty of rebound movement as the car rolls to the right side. Uh, Kyle, when maintenance my Himes, what lube should I use? Um, what do you recommend for a lubrication for Heim joints? I'd use some silicone-based spray lubricant probably, or they do make some like silicone-based spray, uh, kind of a spray grease. I wouldn't use WD-40. Uh, some guys are using some dry graphite stuff. I haven't been able to find out what that is, but uh, I would say the biggest thing is to make sure you clean them really good. And if you're going to lube them, you got to clean them. If you don't clean them, you might as well not lube them. So something that's silicone based. Yeah. And remember when you're using some type of a lube, you, you, you do have to clean them and relube them often because of the lube, no matter what kind of lube you have, they will acquire, they will attract dirt. And the dirt can be kind of like sandpaper if you don't take care of it. And then pretty soon your hinds wore out. Um, how much travel should the left front be limited to? And do you measure that from right height? Uh, yeah, Jason, like if, if I'm going to run a, a, a left front chain, I set it so that it has one and a half inches of droop. In other words, I set it at right height and I jack the car up so that the, the shock moves an inch and a half or the, the, the uh, rear wheel or the outside wheel moves an inch and a half and I set my chain there but like with Chad's bracket we use his upper bracket on our mounts and that has a total of two inches of movement in it is, is that right uh no it's an inch and a inch and a quarter okay I always set mine in the middle of that when I have that inch and a half movement, that way I can go to an inch and three quarters or I can go to an inch and a quarter, or I can go to an inch. It's very adjustable. Can you make an OD cup with a smaller hole for the jack bolt to go through? Not sure what you mean there, like the, the bearing in the jack in the, the cup? Um. I think if that's what you mean, all of our bearings are half inch. I don't know if you have a different, if you want to, might need to explain a little bit more what you want there. If you're looking for a three eighths hole or, or something smaller there, or if you're talking about the big hole on the top, not sure what you mean there, Jim. Um, Justin's got a question. Chad, do you make a spring keeper uh, style coilover kit for the right rear? All of our coilover kits are the OD grab now, yep. Yeah. I assume that what you, that's what you mean by spring keeper. I would I would agree with that. Um, I see we sort of changed their rules for the A mods to run a fabricated lower with stock geometry. Is this worth the money spent to do? Um, you know more about that fabricated lower than I do. Well, I wouldn't run in the advantage of the lower. I will say one thing: the advantage of a manufactured lower A-frame is the spring sets in there better. Yeah, our helixes are perfect. But again, I mean, if you have a fully functioning race car and your lowers are straight and not wrecked, I wouldn't go and buy lowers right away. I mean, I would obviously do it after you crash or, or wreck a lower. Don't. Don't obsolete them lowers. There's no that don't make any sense. So I think I would just transition as you wreck your stuff. There's you really ain't gonna go any faster by putting uh, our lowers on from the stock lowers you have on. The the what you're gonna gain is that they're less expensive uh, and they're perfect. So like Bob said, the sit, the spring sits in there uh, way better. And I feel the way we have our new ones built, we use. Uh, we use one of our shock clevises in there. I guess I could run and grab a lower, but we use uh, a 200-8 clevis in there, so our shock mounts are really strong, and we've really done a lot the last year to develop that lower and make it as good as it is. But I wouldn't necessarily throw away what you got on there just because they made the rule change. Yeah, I mean, as long as they're requiring it to match the stock configurations, there's no no real advantage other than, like I said, I like how, you know, the shock fits on there a little bit nicer. The spring sets in there a little nicer. You know, it's just, uh, 
a, a better piece. Uh, let's see, Tim, in a three-week pro stock, how much droop is too much? Also, how much wheelbase loss is too much? Um, well, the droop kind of depends on on the car. Uh, with the Pro Stock 3 Link, um, we actually ended up having three inches, is what, what our car is, is three inches, uh, an IMCA Sport Mod. Uh, our wheelbase changes three eighths or three inches under full droop. And full droop is, is the way we measure it from ride height to our frame. Uh, it's four and a half inches. So, if, like if the ride height is 12 inches, then our full droop would be at 16 and a half. But I also measure our chain. Our chain measurement needs to be from center to center of the chain, 18 and a quarter inches, and then we adjust it from there. Uh, caster camber for an IMCA stock car. Well, Kenny, uh, you know, that's something I actually I was working on tonight. I'm working on the book for our, uh, IMCA, our, our stock car school coming up here in two weeks. And uh, I run the same camber caster that I do on a sport mod. Um, right front, if I'm running the three P, the, the stock spindles like what you guys are running, uh, you know, in the neighborhood of five degrees caster, uh, camber is a negative six and a half. Um, the stock cars now are starting to get the chassis movement like what the modifieds are getting and the sport mods are getting. So that camber caster needs to be about the same. Left front, uh, I run about two degrees positive caster and then uh, my camber is four, uh, four positive. So I Tipping the left rear or left front out four degrees and tipping the right front in six and a half degrees seems to work pretty good. The biggest key is, and how you can actually check this, Kenny, is um, take your right front spring out and let the car kind of come down to where you think that right front's going to travel. Jack the car up underneath the seat until, you know, and kind of simulate what this is actually looking at. And then you can actually see there. The biggest thing is is making sure that you get the full surface of the tire, um, so you can you can kind of mock that up a little bit. Uh, with the new style bearings, it allows the whole spring to move further outward at two inches of travel. With the smaller diameter, while the spring can only move so far. Um, that's the alignment problem. So it sounds to me, Jim, after reading all that, it looks like the, the cars, maybe the car was either designed for a top bearing cup and then you're putting a drop bearing cup in there. So it's misaligning the screw jack. And that's why when you go through travel, that cup cocks and hits the screw jack. That's not, if, if that's what you're relying on to get your shock hit, that's not a, not a good situation. You probably want to look at getting that right front screw jack maybe realigned and and it seems like you have an issue there with going through travel that cup shouldn't cock against the the screw jack and that be what stops it because what's going on there then is the the spring is clamshelling which means it's you know shorter on one side than the other and that that's really hard on springs and it's an inconsistent right front and i would probably work on getting that thing fixed and lined up through travel better well, you know, and, and, and it's so important having the, especially that right front, well, left front too. But all, it's so important having those springs lined correctly because if you roll through the corner and all of a sudden that spring is at a different angle and it's bowing, pretty soon you're going to actually bend that spring and now all of a sudden it's not going to actually do the job that you wanted it to do. So, um Thanks, Bob and Chad and the crew at the class last weekend. Picked up a lot of good tips. Uh, thank you for your time. Well, thanks, Jared, for coming. We appreciate having you down there, and, and I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, I know we sure enjoyed it and had a lot of fun, and it was nice meeting all you guys. Um, okay. Jim's saying it's a brand-new car. Hmm. Well, I hate to tell you, Jim, uh, 
doesn't necessarily mean that it, I've, I've seen some new cars that you know, maybe they got the jack bolt in there just not quite correct. I mean, it's, yeah, it's hard to say. Um, yeah, thanks, Jim. We do. I do have a video that talks about locating that spring. It's on the uh, uh, Race Tech Knowledge Center. Uh, good video to watch. Pull bar or lift arm, which is the best for a dry slick racetrack? Um, we talked about that pull bar and lift arm thing this weekend. In my opinion, traction wise, it's hard to beat a pull bar. Um, the lift bars have come quite a ways. The problem with a lift bar, you'll never get a car that drives better than a lift arm car. As far as especially on a sweeping corner, you know, something that's high speed, fast, a lift arm car is just going to be super easy to drive. However, they can be a little short on traction sometimes just because that lift arm is where it's located at and how it's trying to lift weight and transfer weight. Um, the pull bar, in my opinion, on a dry slick racetrack is better. I hear some people running the pull bar mounted behind the center of the housing. What are your thoughts on that location versus a couple inches in front of the center of the housing? Well, Mike, when we were running a couple inches ahead of the housing, that was because we were getting so much movement. That's back when our torque links were moving or our pull bars were moving uh, uh, two and a half to three inches of movement. So we didn't want to cam the rear end over. So we had to start ahead of center, and then as it pulled, it was still always pulling angle into it. Well, now we've actually found that there's actually more traction mounted behind the housing. And with our pull bars that are, you know, nowadays our pull bars aren't going over an inch and a quarter max. And so that's a, a big deal um, traction-wise. I feel it's better behind you know we're i think one inch behind is where we're actually at um and, and and that seems to work pretty well when going from a quarter oval to a half oval what bar change to the rear would you expect to make on a 2014 grt sport mod honestly very, very, the only time that I actually make it, you know, the, the short racetrack, I might actually run my right rear up one hole because I want to get a little more steer in the car to roll around the corner. I can, it's a tight cornered racetrack where I got to go in, pivot, um, you know, and, and make sure the car turns and still comes off good. Half mile racetrack, I'd probably run it maybe even a little bit flatter um you know but honestly i don't change them uh i i'm i'm more concerned about the condition of the racetrack whether it's dry slick or whether it's tacky in comparison to the size of the racetrack I, i'm more in, more concerned about the actual condition jared that's some of the best money i spent on dirt racing well i appreciate that jared nice comment thank you very much for that good comment and like i said we we had a great time and it was a lot of fun and, and uh, uh, I'm all pumped up to go to New York now and, and, and so I'm, I'm ready to go. I, I, I'm ready. I, I, I'm thinking to myself that's going to be bad. We got the weekend off next weekend, so uh, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go, but I ain't going out on that bridge with you. So <laughs> yeah, 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 that's. Uh, I don't blame you there. 300 feet up in the air is a little on the scary side. Did you miss Tim? Did we miss Tim's question? I might have. 2,800 pound pro stock is 48 inch pull bar too long at 20 degrees. What do you recommend? How heavy of a pro stock? 2,800 pound. 2,800 pounds. Um, 48 inches is pretty long. It's pretty long. I stay between that 28 and 36. And uh, what did Riley say? He's at 38. Yeah. The longer you go, um, you run into the problem where it's going to be, 
you're going to have better traction down the straightaway, but it's going to be kind of lazy and, and, and not as responsive in the middle of the corner. Uh, I think that's a little bit long uh, for the weight of the car. I would consider something in that 36 inch range. Uh, that's just my opinion. The sort of street stock rear trailing arm mount bolts must be parallel to the rear end side to side. Benefits of mounting them closer to the rear end or max of four inches anyway. Um, honestly, with those, those trailing arms, I, I still think GM got that thing right where they actually mounted them. Uh, I don't really see a big advantage. I wouldn't widen them for sure. Uh, I don't know if I would narrow them. Uh, I might not be the right guy to ask that question because I'm not as familiar with um, that type of thing. But I know uh, where the stock location is pretty good. When mounting a pull bar behind, how high off the housing? Well, actually, I can't tell you the height off the housing, but from the center of the uh, axle tube to the to the mounting location is 12 inches some guys are 11 but most everybody's in that 11 to 12 inch mark um when mounting the pull bar behind how high uh, we got that one got that one well we got a little bit of a break here we, we need some more questions um what uh, your Rochester show? What what did you decide to do on? So obviously, when you don't have vendors, you don't have a show. So we didn't have a lot of vendors sign up. So we moved it. Uh, we're moving it to November. Try and get some other manufacturers there. I mean, I think I feel there's a need in our area for a small regional show. We're just looking for our fellow manufacturers like you and, and some other companies and trying to find a weekend that works good there. And I, f I still think we should have some sort of a show, but man, there's so much going on. It's really hard to hard to get everybody on the same page. So we're, we're looking at November uh, tentatively. The 19th is what we're shooting for. We've had a couple people sign up now. So we just got behind planning this deal for, it was supposed to be this week. And I mean, it just got to the point where we just didn't have enough time to get it rolling and do it right. And we didn't want to shortchange people and have them come see seven, eight booths. I mean, that's a waste of everybody's time. So, so we, we pushed it back to give us some more time to, to dial it in and, and get some, you know, obviously we need vendors and companies to, to have a show for worthy of people to come to. So, so we're, we've kind of started over. Uh, pushed it back, gave us some more time to plan out, but we're still planning on November. Well, I think that's a great time of the year to have it. You know, at the beginning and people, you know, you get into November, people are, are back to thinking, you know, a little bit more about racing. And I know definitely my schedule in November is free. So, you know, I don't have anything going on. So that would be exciting to do something like that. Uh, I think that's a perfect time. Yeah. Um, whoops. Yeah. Tim Cooper. Yeah, and he decided to go because everybody says the tech support is awesome. All right, I lost it. You'll have to read it. My boy, 14. We ordered a sport mod from you guys. He going to try and run for rookie points this year. Decided to go with the GRT because everyone says the tech support is awesome. Thanks for what you guys do and can't wait till the new car is done. You must be putting together a car for Tim Cooper. Yes, we actually are. We don't actually have the car yet from GRT, but we're hoping to get that soon. And, and Tim's out of Nebraska, and so we're, we're looking forward to for building your race car, Tim. Uh, and I can't read the next one either. Ordered a Jim Chiba, ordered a new quick change from for the Wissota Midwest Modified. Weir's brackets arrived already. Now we wait and wait and wait for the rear end. Weir's quick change next. <laughs> well, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, you know, when it, uh, really, I mean, when I, part of the reason I started this company is because 
you know, when I was in 1997, when I was working on cars and 95 and 96, I couldn't get some parts and it was a problem back then. I'm like, I think we can do a better job stocking this. So from day one, my goal has been, <clears throat> if you're going to come out with a part, you should probably be able to sell it to somebody. So it is very difficult in these times uh, when you have, I think we're over 1500 part numbers to have everything in stock. And my accountant and I fight about it all the time. But uh, zero back orders is my life goal. It's at eight pages right now. I looked at it this morning because we had our meeting. It was like 973 parts on back order. And that drives me nuts. But I would definitely not want to be a rear end manufacturer now because them guys are way behind. So way behind. We, we yeah. try, to have, try to have everything in stock, but it's, a, it's been a struggle. Uh, obviously, we... My biggest pe problem is the people. I mean, we, we have a severely understaffed machine shop. So, I mean, if you're watching this and you know somebody that's a machinist and looking for a career change, I mean, come on over. We're, we'd love to have you. We got 12 machines. It's a beautiful shop. We make the greatest racing products in the world, made right here in, in the great old United States of America. So that's what we're fighting. We're fighting finding people that want to work and, and really want to show up and take a little pride in what they do and produce some awesome products. So that's my hiring stint for the night. So you're going to thanks, have... Jim. I appreciate that. <laughs> kind of went off on a tantrum there. That's okay. Uh, I think you have to read the next two or three. Oh, I stalled it out and they're off your sheet. And all of a sudden, yeah, we're way off. In oh, they're flying in now. Now I yeah. can't keep up. Uh, Colby says, I'm looking to get, a new set of shocks for my IMCA stock car. Just curious how far out you are on the shocks. It would it would be all new ones. Well, my opinion, we shouldn't be very far out. Um, I would have to talk to Bobby for sure, but normally we, we were within about three days. Now, he did mention to me today about working Saturday this week because he's got a bunch of rebuilds and stuff in there, but the new stuff... They're turning it around pretty good, uh, as long as we have product on the shelf, you know, to build. Uh, it shouldn't be, a, it would be under a week. Uh, but I, I could be wrong about that, but normally that they're they're really good. He's, Bobby's pretty anal about that. If there's stuff sitting there, it needs to go out. And so those guys work pretty hard. All right, the next one. Alex Crawford, stock car, what size actual diameter do you suggest running if I switch to the twist axles? Um, I don't have a lot of knowledge with those. Um, you're, you're better off to ask somebody better than me. I would... Uh, strange? I, yeah, I would talk to Strange or call Performance Bodies and talk to Darren Duffy. Um, those guys, you know, they work with a lot of customers, and I know they sell some of that stuff. Um, they might have a better idea. I've not worked with those axles, believe it or not. I've just always been a firm believer in that axle that we have works good, and I tune the car around it where the, the axle, not saying they don't work, it's just another element that uh, you put in the setup equation. Greg says, what do you think? Car wouldn't turn, then it broke the right front shock. It started turning. Softer right front shock or softer right front spring? Well, I mean, if you broke the shock and it started turning, that's definitely saying that you must have a, a, a too stiff of a, a, a shock on the car or the shocks mounted in some sort of a bind. I mean, I, I question why you broke the shock. Um, you know, because if the shock's not mounted correctly, so that, you know, if that shaft is going one direction from the body, it's going to make it bind and, and make the car probably try to not get on the right front, where when it broke, now all of a sudden it can get on the right front and, and, and the car is working better. So I would investigate how the actual shock is mounted. Uh, we had, you know, a chassis builder that had some mounting issues and you know, we bent some shocks and and uh, finally, you know, we just explained it to them. The way they were mounting the shock was putting the shock in a bind. It wasn't the shock's fault that was going wrong. It was the actual mounting location. 
Do you also build IMC stock cars? Um, I do not build IMC stock cars. We sell B and B cars. Um, uh, right now, to the we're kind of to the point where if you wanted a stock car from us, God would only tell you when we could actually get it done because we're so far behind with what we have. I'd call Paul Berger at B and B and and see what he's got going on. I think he could probably get you one quicker than what we could. Because I was I was just there. You have cars in the shop, out of the shop, in the snowbank, in the trailer. <laughs> Yeah, and we got four of them at the powder coater. Four at the powder coater. It's a busy place. I'm like, man. And we finally actually, the one car left today, finally. And, and there's supposed to be two others that are finally leaving this week. So hopefully. And, uh, oh, yeah, you didn't see our pretty blue one because we went and got that this morning. Our pretty candy, candy blue. It's a nice looking frame, man. Anyway, go ahead. Billy, not sure understood my question. Lower trailing bolt, trailing arm bolts mounted close to the axle tube or further away. Oh, uh, gotcha. And they yeah, can be within oh, four inches. No, I think they have to be the same both sides, don't they? Yeah, but I think they, you've got a four inch window. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, you don't want to go closer to the axle tube on the left rear. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I would probably almost go further away on the left rear to get more angle in that left rear trailing arm and then shorten it up a little bit unless they both have to be the same. If they both have to be the same, um, it's kind of like our normal four-link car should be four and a half inches from the center of the axle housing down to the bolt. Yeah. Scott, pull bar on rear end. Most builders have it centered between the rear tires. As the track dries out or is generally always dry, would you want to have it a little closer to the left rear to help influence that tire to tighten it off the corner? You know, probably. Uh, I would still be a little concerned about corner entry. Um, as long as you can put a little bit more panard bar in it and you can get the car into the corner good and make sure you're stuck good uh, corner entry in, in, in the middle of the corner, it will definitely traction you up off the corner. It just might hurt phase one and phase two, and you'll have to make other adjustments on the car accordingly. IMCA Sport Mod. When mounting a new, to me, BHE rear diff with Weir's bar mounts, what angle should I have the bars, left to right? Um, left rear bar should be a, somewhere between 24 and 28 inches, or 28, ugh, 24 and 28 degrees at right height. Uh, the biggest thing is, is this back to that same deal. Take that right front spring out, let that car roll over on the right front where you think it's going to be, and jack up underneath the seat till you, you, you hit the chain. And you don't want to be over 45 degrees dynamically. Um, my right side, I usually run that in that five degree range. So that way then when the racetrack gets super slick, I can drop it down a degree or I can raise it up a degree. Because even on a real heavy racetrack, we run 10 degrees on the, on the right bar. But as a rule of thumb, about five to seven degrees is, or seven degrees is actually a good place to start start from um, but the left rear the key to that one is is making sure that you, you don't that the car never gets over that 45 degree at, at uh, dynamic mode UMP pro mod longer or shorter pull bar and what's the pros cons to both well a longer pull bar now, those guys get to run a spoiler now, don't they, UMP? Not sure I'm, about the mod. I'm thinking they get to run a spoiler. Uh, with the spoiler uh, and that tire that you run, that tire is going to probably like a longer pull bar uh, because it, the tire itself is going to hook the car up pretty good. 
Uh, that pull bar in that neighborhood, that you know, 36 inch range, 34 inch range, probably going to be pretty good. You just uh, said yes well, to the spoiler. Okay. Um, it's probably going to be um, the, the short one. Anything that's short reacts quick but doesn't last long. Anything that's long is a little bit, a little bit lazier to react, but it reacts longer. So I like the longer pull bar because then I can tighten the car up in the middle of the corner. I get good straightaway speed and, and get, get you know, and the car stays hooked up all the time. Uh, let's see here. I lost it. 2016 GRT, would it be good to update front end upper A frames to the new style mounts? Well, in, in, in my opinion, it, it, I like them. Um, I think we made good good headway on that deal. The, the car, I feel with the new mounts and the new front end, the car's faster in phase two of the corner. Um, the car seems to not want to load and unload the the left rear as much, you know, and, and we were kind of talking about that last weekend, that jacking effect uh, where the, when you turn to the right, the, that right rear kind of, that right front tries to load the left rear and you get that kind of a jacking effect. The new front end doesn't seem to have as much of that. And so it just seems like corner speed is, is better. So in, in my opinion, I, I think it'd be something to strongly consider. Whitney says, is it worth converting a car to three-piece spindles? If so, what changes would you do with camber, caster, and spring rate? Uh, read that to me again. Is it worth converting your car to the three-piece spindles? If so, mm -hmm. what changes do you do to the caster, camber, and spring rates? Well, the thing it is, is the three-piece spindle's got a different pin inclination, and it's a different center of the pin. So... Keep in mind, it's not a bolt-on deal. Um, you need different lower ball joints. And uh, uh, when we change the three-piece spindles, we change the lower ball joints. Uh, camber and caster, we run the same camber uh, at six and a half negative on the right front, four and a half or four uh, positive on the left front. Caster, we up the caster. I, I run five, six degrees positive caster. Uh, on the three-piece spindle just because of the the seven degree pin inclination and I still run that two to three on the left side uh, with the three-piece spindles we run three on the left side on a hobby stock would a soft left rear spring act the same if following the even height rule I would assume the car wouldn't build the same attitude or unload off the frame the same way a stiffer spring would. Well, you know, just the way those are mounted, I mean, in theory it should. However, kind of depends on the rule of thumb there. Those cars kind of need a little bit more left rear traction. And so, you know, maybe the standard spring might not be a bad idea. Um, you know, I know a lot of people are going with that left rear spring like that. But I think you would definitely have to do some other things to the car uh, to make that left rear spring work. And if you run a lot of tail percentage, uh, that's going to make that that left rear spring lazy. What is the function of mounting ballast to the left rear axle tube? I'll let you answer that one. Grip. Weight is load and load is grip. So... Left rear axle tube, if you, I don't know what you run or what you race, but clamp on lead is, is the way to go. Anytime you make the unsprung weight heavier and the track is rough, uh, you're going to wish you hadn't done it. So we make heavy cages. Uh, we used to make a heavy rotor. We make a heavy wheel spacer. There's lots of options depending on what your rules will allow. There's no doubt that uh, weight is load and load is traction, but... If the track is rough and, and uh, heavy, you're going to wish you didn't do it. So that's why we, we started with the clamp on weight. That's the best way to do it. When it's smooth and slick, put as much weight on there as you can fit. When it's rough and, and heavy, get it off there. So, 
Whoops. I'm back. The pull bar gets moved closer to the left rear. You'd want to put more angle in the J bar? Definitely. I would highly recommend more angle in the J bar. Derek, what are your thoughts on a right rear spring position on IMCA stock car for tracks that usually get dry slick? Would it be better to put to be in front or behind the housing or centered on the top of the tube? Well, if you're in a situation where it's just super duper slick and it's kind of a stop and go type slick, um, I would run the the right rear behind the housing, and the left rear in front of the housing. I always run the left rear in front of the housing, period. But either in the center of the housing on the right rear or behind the housing, but behind the housing is going to give you more traction. It might make the car a little tight getting in, and then once you're on the throttle, it it could be it could make the car a little bit tighter. Uh, but on a real slick racetrack, especially a drag race type situation, that's where you're going to have the most maximum grip. Tim Clark says, thanks for taking time out of your busy lives to keep doing these live streams. You guys have a ton of information that helps a lot of people. You're appreciated. Well, thanks, Tim. We appreciate that. Uh, we enjoy doing this. We look forward to doing that. Uh, we have a good time, and, and once again, it's just uh, enjoy talking to all you people and, and listen to the questions, and, and uh, it's just a lot of fun. We enjoy it. What else would we do on a Monday night? What the heck? Exactly. This way, Scott's we get to talk to we get to talk to racers. I mean, how can that be? How can anything be more fun? Right. You see that bottom one, Scott? Yep. Thanks for. Yep, I got it. Thanks for asking the questions. Now, Barry, what lower ball joints do you run with the three-piece spindles? Are they the same on both sides? Actually, they're not the same on both sides. And, Barry, I wish I could actually tell you, um, if you call the shop tomorrow and talk to Austin, uh, he can tell you what they are and, and give you the how part number, or we can sell them to you either way. But... Um, I just don't know the part numbers off the top of my head and the actual length, but the left front one is longer than the right front. Uh, so like I said, just give Austin a call tomorrow at the shop and he'll be happy to get you that information. Well, we're winding down. we got six more minutes. Uh, if there's any more questions out there, uh, feel free to ask them. And once again, I think that November deal, that's a, that's a great idea. Yeah, we're thinking right after the Vegas race or maybe even the Vegas week. I don't know how many Midwestern guys go out there. I don't know. We're looking at them weeks in November. I know the 19th is opening deer camp in Wisconsin, so we're maybe trying to go both earlier than that, but we'll see how it develops here. <coughs> Excuse me. Gotcha. With the new. Oh, Jesus, look at him. <laughs> Late rush. Did Zach go off the top of your screen? Yep. With the new hobby stock spring rule, how soft do you believe you can go before uh, the soft spring just becomes useless? Well, you know, it's hard to say uh, on a on a hobby stock deal. I'm not. I'm not a huge believer in that real soft spring. Um, I just don't think they limit you on so many other things that I, I'm not convinced that soft spring is the answer. If I was to say how soft I would go, I probably wouldn't go softer than a 150. 125 is the softest thing I would ever run. But with the weight of your car, a 150 is probably the softest I would go. Colby says, is there any advantage of running a shorter spring on the right rear and a taller spring on the left rear of an IMCA stock car? Oh, by far. You know, that's your spring table, man. That's big. Um, you know, you guys can run that 16-inch spring. So I run, I recommend on all of our stock car stuff, running a 16-inch um, left rear with a 13-inch right rear. 
I think that makes a big difference. Those cars have a little bit of a problem with side bite to begin with, and that just helps the side bite substantially. Zach said on the right rear, well, you don't want to go soft in the right rear. No. You're going to look, you're going to look cool, but you ain't going to go anywhere. Softer springs is just going to compress and it's not going to load the tire. So you're going to like, like Chad said, you're going to look cool, but it's not going to be fast. Can you see Cade? Nope. Cade Richards had a good, great time at the RTI school, learned a lot Got a bunch of new ideas to try. Thanks, guys. It was nice to meet you, Cade. That was cool. Yeah. Cade does a great job, man. I tell you what, he's had, uh, well, second in IMCA National Points last year with a stock car, and he's been uh, IMCA Sport Mod rookie, and he was the IMCA stock car rookie. And Cade does an awesome job. I mean, you know, for what those guys, the way they do it, and the first time I met Cade, they, you know, they, while on their stock car, they build their own car. I mean, and who – Nowadays, who does that? I mean, you, you know, you just don't hear of that. So, yeah, those guys do a heck of a job. Thanks, Cade. We appreciate it. And I can't wait to see you run that modified. Tim Clark, on a follow-up of a previous question, when you move the pull bar to the left on the housing, do you want to add to adjust the J-bar on the chassis side or on the pinion side? Pinion side. Lower the pinion side? Yeah, anytime you adjust it on the pinion, it's going to be twice the amount. I mean, you can go a half an inch compared to an inch on the on the rear end. It's just going to be a lot. You can do a lot less of a change to make a change. Uh, do you rebuild any shock brand? Um, we do Penske's, Bilstein's, um, AFCO's. Uh, CSIs, I think that's all I know about. Now, there might be something that I don't know about, but I think that's it. Uh, your thoughts on the live shock and spring on left rear A mod, and do you stay with, and then it moves, with a soft spring or a stiff spring? Live shock? And spring, so coil over behind, left rear, coil over behind. Coil over behind. Um, you definitely will go with a little bit stiffer spring. You'll find that your shock absorber needs to have a little less compression and a little bit more rebound. What's your thoughts on a 400-pound spring on a pull bar with a bump inside? Well, I think that works pretty good. I mean, you know, uh, that's kind of what – our torque link, we run some 400 pound stuff last year. Uh, we, we stay in that 400 to 500 pound range and, and then use those stops in the middle because what you know, kind of what it does, the spring definitely reacts differently than the stops do. So you kind of get the best of both worlds in a sense. On a BMA that likes to three wheel, if you move the pull bar one way or the other on the housing, will it calm the car down any? Uh, moving it to the right will definitely calm it down. More than likely, if it's liking to, th liking to freewheel, your rear end's too far to the left. Um, what's happening is the car's getting in, getting over on the right rear. Uh, you don't have, a, maybe need a stiffer spring. The problem with it is, is sometimes the stiffer spring can be a Band-Aid. Um, I line my left side tires up. I string line my left side tires and then my right side's in probably an inch and a quarter from my right front. If you're too far inboard on that right rear or like have a four inch offset, yeah, you're in the three wheel. Hey guys, I have a question after reading through the two link chassis school book some more. When I got home from class, my application is IMC Northern Sport Mod. Would you recommend having a positive rear spring table with two 13-inch springs? And that's awesome when it moves, then you really lose it. 13-inch yeah. <laughs> positive, 13-inch springs and a right rear drop cup that is an outside diameter grab, or would you recommend two standard height cups and a 13 and 11-inch spring? I appreciate you guys doing these chat sessions and putting on the chassis schools. 
I would use the drop cup on the right rear, that new one that Chad just built. It's, uh, it's, it's a deeper cup. Uh, I like that better. And I definitely would use the drop cup in the right front because if the, once the car gets in, you know, and, and like Riley Hatfield explained it last weekend about a triangle. And, and one thing about it, once the car gets in and gets over on the right front, it's going to go to the right rear. I mean, if it doesn't get on the right front, that's what's keeping it off the right rear. So typical situation, uh, I, I like the two 13-inch springs. I put that drop cup on the right side, um, you know, and I think you'd be okay with the spring table in the rear being even as long as you've got that drop cup on the right front. So you're saying a softer spring in the left rear of a hobby and stiffer in the right rear, doesn't more left rear spring create the traction? Well, it creates hike, which sometimes can create traction. You, you, you just got to remember we're, we're, loading it, we're loading it to the point where too soft of a left rear spring can just give you motion and not produce any load to the tire. Um, you know, that's just my opinion. Uh, what type of pull bar do you use on the Northern Sportman? Thank you very much. Well, the Northern Sportman has to be a stock, just a solid rod. Um, that's the only thing you can run on a Northern Sport mod. Uh, Landon, how much movement? How much movement are you getting with the 400 pound in that pull bar? Well, with our pull bar, with that, we're getting an inch and a quarter of movement, uh, but we've got a stack of bushings that restrict that movement. So the 400-pound pull bar, um, you're saying an inch and a half. That's inch and a half is right on the edge of too much for those pull bars. Uh, inch and a quarter seems to be about the top. What I do run it, I, we usually are in that inch to inch and a quarter range. Uh, what's the part number on that right rear sport my drop cup? 404 TC is a tall cup with the extra lip on it. Just called today on that subject. Wish Chad made the top mount left rear cup. cup. Okay. Uh, Colby, I asked about the difference in speed spring height from left to right in the rear, is there an advantage of doing it on the front also? Well, Colby, on the front, I normally, like I said, I, I, I run that, uh, unless I'm going to run a really soft spring for some strange reason, normally I would much rather run the drop cup just because I, I like the way that spring table is. You know, with that drop cup, it makes it so that the spring table is a lot lower on the right front, helps the car get in on the right front a lot better. And and once again, we got to get the car to pivot around the right front corner. So getting that car over on the right front gets the car on the right rear and just helps this car do its thing. Uh, it's just easier to tune. Uh, I think it's just a, a great advantage to go with that drop cup. All right, guys, we're at the end of our session. We appreciate all the questions tonight. You guys had some awesome questions, and uh, we appreciate it. Um, I forgot to actually look at what the date the next one was. Watch for Facebook, and we'll have that published on Facebook to let you guys know what date we're going. And I don't have a, actually have a calendar in this room, so I can't actually tell you. But uh, I sure appreciate appreciate everybody listening. We have a lot of fun with this and and uh, we'll always just hope that we can help somebody go a little better because if they go a little better, they're going to be in the sport better longer and your friends are going to like it and your wife's going to like it because you're going to be happier. And it's just a good thing all the way around, man. So thanks a lot, guys. We sure appreciate it. Thanks. Have a good night.